let's get started. It's uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, Pablo Ranias presenting in our in our webinar today. Pablo is uh, currently professor at uh, Loyola Andalusia Uni. He has uh, uh, a great publication record uh, in uh, mainly in experimental economics, covering issues like minority inequality and uh, I won't, I won't bore you and bother you with uh, reading Pablo's CV, which you can read if you're interested in uh, uh, exploring topics he's working on. I reiterate the, the great pleasure to have him over today. I quickly hand over to him. He has uh, a lot of uh, new results to tell us over uh, the great and controversial issues we've learned for decades, which are time and uh, risk attitudes. So I pass over the word to you, Pablo. You have about an hour and you can take questions throughout and uh, fend them, pose them, take them as, uh, as you wish. So we, we aim at about, we aim at finishing by two, 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 say ten past two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcelo, for the invitation and all the organizers. And for me, it's obviously a pleasure to, to be here giving this talk about incentives. Um, uh, as Adam as said in the, um, uh, I sent an abstract with these two papers because are very two related papers. The difference is in one of them, uh, we focus on risk aversion and in the other, uh, what we do is to analyze time preferences. Uh, are similar in the sense that some of the experiments, as you will see, are conducted at the same time, not everything, because there are some differences. And the focus of the paper uh, is always the same, is we are concerned whether paying people or not real money, as is, you know, a must in experimental economics, so nobody get a paper published if you don't use real monetary incentives. So the question is whether this is really an issue, whether you need to pay people. Um, we are concerned about this for different reasons. Um, so there is a specific reason for time preferences, and I will talk later, and there is a different and specific reason for risk preferences, but Overall, even if we don't consider these problems, there is an issue with paying people, which is mainly that many surveys now, I'm talking about, say, the European survey or the, or the Gallup pool or the SOE in Germany, they are using this type of questions. So questions that have been validated in the lab for many years. But still, we, we am saying experimental economists, because these questions are not incentivized, then we don't trust on this. And this is mostly the origin of this project that has been a quite long project, like two or three years and a massive amount of money. To answer this question, whether paying people matters or not, um, we focus only in two problems. One is related with uncertainty, with making decisions in uncertainty, while the other is making decisions about time. So that means that we are not talking about games. We are not saying anything about whether paying or not real money when you play games matters or not. And we are talking only about these two particular tasks that are, that are most likely the most famous ones. So ours, especially for, in the case of whole lorry, you know, it's, it's like, you know, the can, a canonical task in experimental economics. Okay, so I will start with this uh, paper on time preferences. This is a paper I conduct with Diego Horrat, which is my student, Antonio Spin from Granada, and Ancho Sanchez from Carlos III. This is like the original idea. And the main reason we started this project is precisely because many surveys now are including these questions about time preferences. And they use this MPL system, the MPL questionnaire, where people are asked to, to decide whether they prefer a certain amount of money today or tomorrow or in one month or two months. And then you just increase the amount of money in one side of the list 
and then you offer more and more money until certain point where the individual switch. And this is the level of patient. And patient is becoming something critical in economics. It's becoming like a major issue because it's correlated with good things, okay? Like good behavior, saving, education, even growth, etc. Although there is, um, say, increasing evidence for time preferences, there is there are very few staff in the field using discussing the question whether paying people or not is relevant. There are papers with real money, say Tanaka Camera, which is most probably the most famous, this, this paper in Vietnam that has like 2,000 citations. And there are many others that are hypothetical, so typically we don't trust on these measures. There are two particular papers that are very interesting. One is this paper from Gine where they study, this is paper published in PNAS, where they study whether people have uh, made consistent choices in intertemporal decisions. And the very, very hot topic now is this uh, stuff starting with Ertak, this Turkish woman. She has this new paper showing that you can intervene patient. So you can run certain interventions and as a result of this, people become, become more patient, which is a, like a serious issue. And this is related to other stuff in psychology. There are many people running, running experiments with kids, with very young kids, and they are playing games and certain tasks, and they are showing higher level of patients because of the intervention. Um, okay, the question is, if we want to measure patient, if we want to, to know whether it's possible to intervene patient, if we want to, to, to test whether it's possible to make impatient people to become more patient, we need a good measure of patient, which is exactly what we don't have. And there are basically two ways to measure patient, I mean, in economics, the most standard. One is this MPL, which is the mechanism I'm going to use along the paper, which is the old one, the classic one. We could say like there are 1,000 papers on this where the individual is asked to make decisions, where the amount of money in the future is increasing. And then the second, the second mechanism is this uh, a famous uh, paper from Andreoni and Sprenger, which is called Convex Type Budget, where individual makes decisions, but instead of choosing between today and tomorrow, I prefer to get 10 euros today than 11 tomorrow, for instance, you are uh, allowed to make interior solutions. So you can decide, okay, I want to put 40% today, 60% tomorrow, or 42 and 58. Although this mechanism is very powerful, much more powerful than the previous one, the question is like super complicated. People need to make, make something like 72 decisions. And this is you know, unaffordable in the field. It's almost impossible. Okay. I have a quick remark um, about... Uh... Uh, about the relationship between, say, theory and experiments. Uh, in econ, uh, we, we have a bias, in a way, uh, don't hate me for that, about uh, review preferences. Mm -hmm. If we don't pay people, uh, then, uh, then we're not, we're not uh, experimentalists, serious experimentalists any longer. Uh, there's this, um, what's his name? This hatred relations between economists who pay, i.e. use your preferences, psychologists who use stated preferences. In one way, you are you are testing this uh, whether you're testing this relationship between stated and revealed preferences. I wonder, is there any is there any theory you can uh, you can link your work to? Uh, um, for example, this paper, this J, the JJP by, uh, by uh, Alan and Ertak you mentioned, they, as part of intervention, ask children to imagine their future selves, uh, which is more, which is leaning more towards the stated preferences than revealed preferences. Um, so I wonder whether this, this JP 2008, your paper, and a bunch of other papers trying to link stated with the real preferences are doing a great job 
and there's some related theory paper which can give us an even bigger picture. Okay, I think this is a huge question. <laughs> okay. And um, so let me explain exactly what we do. Okay. I, I agree with you. But okay, the, the, but the nice thing is that um, we are not going to find any difference because what we believe is that when people face these problems, they take the job seriously. And it's not a question of money. It's a question of they want to, you know, succeed doing this task. Um, but let me continue and we can discuss about these kind of things later. Okay? Sure. Okay, so as everybody knows in experimental economics, so in economics, uh, we need to pay monetary incentives. And then the question is, what happens if we don't pay? Okay, let me explain uh, some problems with paying for real in time discount because it's very specific. In time discount, when people make decisions, they make decision about getting some amount of money, say today, and some amount of money tomorrow or tomorrow, one week, two weeks, or whatever. The question is that when you are uh, have people making these decisions, and then finally some of them decide to wait until tomorrow, or the day after two months, six months, one year, or whatever, then there are certain costs that are associated to getting the money tomorrow, tomorrow or in the future. Recall that in experimental economy, we don't deceive people. So that means if you select, that you want to wait six months to get 13 euro, then you wait 13 months. Okay, there are a lot of issues about this. One of them is this called transaction cost, okay? Today you are in the lab, you are making decisions, and then it may be the case that some individuals decide to get the money today, not because they are impatient or impatient, it's just because they don't want to come back tomorrow to get the money, tomorrow, two weeks, three weeks. It's true, it's true that there are certain uh, bank uh, transfers that may solve you this problem partially. But this is not necessarily true if you run an experiment in Nigeria like we did, for instance. The second is that the problem with uncertainty. If you ask people whether they want to wait two weeks, three weeks, six months, it may be the case that they don't wait. Not because they are impatient, it's because they don't trust they don't think that in six months you will be there to pay them. There is an issue about ar uh, arbitrage, which is, okay, we, you are offering certain amount of money, which is completely unrealistic. So you are offering people 12, uh, 10 euro today, 12 tomorrow, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 20, so huge amounts of money. And then most of the people in finance said that, okay, this is ridiculous. You are offering much more than the market. So then most likely people should accept because you are offering crazy amount of money. There is an obvious issue in development economics, which is inflation. What happens if you decide to save in Argentina and then six months later you have less money? So this is not a question of, of time preferences. It's a question of inflation. So these are, these, these are like the, the basic problems. There are a second stream of problems that are related with cost, logistic cost. We did the experiment in Nigeria, certain people said, I prefer to wait one month. And then we need to come back to this place in the middle of nowhere to pay these people back. And in fact, this was much more expensive than the experiment itself. So there are huge logistic costs. And there are a new problem, and this is a new thing, that if you need to do back transfer, whatever type of transfer with Bizum or something, you need private information. So people need to disclose your private information, and there is another issue. And if you want to run an experiment with children, in Spain, particularly if they are below 16, you need parental permission for this. So there are a lot of reasons to to think carefully whether you know it's worth it. Okay, so the question is why if we don't pay? Okay, this question is not new. There are like three, four papers on this, or five papers on this. 
One of them is, uh, well, we have the original paper from this Madden and Johnson, and this Collin and William, etc. and this paper in the field by Uthman. But the problem with these papers is, is very obvious, is they have a ridiculous number of observations. I mean, it's not that they don't have power, it's that they even don't know the word power. So we are talking about 30 observations between within subject, the same subject make the decision this way, the other way. So it's you know it's hard to believe these results. In the case of Uthval, for instance, uh, the payment scheme is over there, but it's not the treatment. So they, there are not randomization about this. All this paper, they say there are no differences. Okay. Okay, so we I, we are we aim to have like a, two critical elements in this research. Treatments, so, sorry, people are randomized, okay, to each arm with independent probability. So you, I toss a coin for you, a dice for you, and then you are assigned to treatment one, two, or three. So there is nothing about session effect, nothing about randomization at session level or something like this. No, it's individual randomization. And second thing is to have enough power to show this. Okay, so this is the idea. Okay, let me start with this, uh, with the first experiment. So this is like the basic uh, setup for everything. We have three treatments paid for real, real money. 10 euros today to more, 11 tomorrow, or 10 euros today, 14 tomorrow. If you get the money, you get the, so if you, if you select tomorrow, you get the money tomorrow, the real money. The, the, the other treatment on the right is the hypothetical treatment, which is identical, where the only difference is that there is no real money. So you explicitly said that decisions are hypothetical, okay? And in the middle, we have something which is now becoming like very famous in experimental economics, which is this breeze mechanism, where people are not paid, not everybody is paid for real. You said people, one out of 10 will be paid for real. Okay, so we have three treatments. Treatment one is real money, not anything about real hypothetical payoffs. You get the money, you make your choices, you get the money. In the other extreme, we have hypothetical choices. You get zero money for this. And in the middle, we have this breeze, which is one out of 10 people is getting paid. And I'm going to focus on, on I will mention something about the, the, the breeze mechanism, but I will focus on the difference between real and hypothetical payoffs because this is the critical thing. Okay, we have three experiments. In this experiment number one is a lab experiment we conduct in Sevilla University, in the public university, in the big, big one. We have typical student participants, typical voluntaries. We have papers, so everything is conducted in paper. Every, every individual was randomly assigned to one treatment. And there, there are no risk preferences. We have, and um, was conducted in a lab, and there are no enumerators. For those who are not familiar with this word, enumerators are the people in the field that conduct the experiment. When you do experiment uh, household by household, there are someone who visits your place. This is called enumerator. We have 120 observations. In the field, we have ordinary people in Nigeria. The questionnaire were conducted with tablet, with this uh, survey CTO, for those who are familiar with this technology. And there is no risk, sorry, there is risk only for the half of the population of the sample. The experiment were conducted in household that were randomly selected. And there are 62 enumerators in total and 700 observations. Finally, we have another experiment which was conducted online. Um, we have ordinary people, questionnaires were conducted, people did use it mobiles, tablet or whatever they want. Um, there is risk preferences, uh, was conducted online, there are no denominators, and there, there are 360, uh, 340 people for this treatment. I will talk a little bit about this later also. Okay, let's start with balance. We have three observable characteristics for this population, for the students. We know the age, female, and CRT. This is all we know about these guys. Okay, you can see if you compare uh, 
hypothetical with real, there are no differences and nothing is significant. Okay, so these three samples are balanced. This is not surprising because of the randomization. If you compare the bridge with the real, there are certain issues here, but it's a minimal thing, but I will focus on, on hypothetical versus real. If you go to Nigeria, we compare age, female, level of education, if they have sufficient money to feed their home, the, the house, and risky choices in the whole lobby. We have 721 people, this is the mean, this is the difference, and you see that almost nothing is different except that in the hypothetical we have a bit older people. This is significant, it's a minimal thing, but it's there. Obviously, we can put everything in the regression later. In the online experiment, uh, we have uh, the hypothetical 320 people, and then we have the breeze. We don't have real money in the online. It was impossible to conduct this. And, and you see that these samples are mostly are very, very similar. There are very few exceptions in the balance. Okay, what we are going to use is this MPL. We use the most standard one and where participants made a total of 20 binary choices. They have the first block is decision number one to 10, where they have to decide whether they want to get something today versus one month. In the second um, block, they have to make another 11 decisions, one month versus seven months. This is always the same. You have the amount of money we use in Sevilla here, the amount of money we use in Nigeria, the amount of money we use in the online experiment in Spain. This is the short term interest rate, this is the long term interest rate. And what we are going to do is to estimate the parameter of the quasi hyperbolic beta delta discount, okay? And then we will focus in four measures beta, delta, number of later allocations, and later allocation in the long term. Pablo, one quick qualification. You mm -hmm. run this multi multi sites experiment, and uh, there is a there's, there's a developed country, a developing country in um, in the pool of subjects. What is the standard uh, out of migrants to convert uh, the, the, the 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 amount the, 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 what's the name the premium uh, the payments in different uh, in different countries? Okay, so sorry, I didn't mention this. Yeah. So typically what we do is uh, in, in the lab we pay like one hour time, which is about 10 euro. This is like a standard. And we, we thought most to do the same for ordinary people. This is why we fix 30 euro instead of 10. And then uh, for uh, Nigeria, we did a very similar transformation. Okay. So the, the, the daily wage in Nigeria in this area was 1,000 naira. 1.2 or something like this. So we took a third for this. Okay? Fine, fine, fine. The point is not really to compare this count between this and that. It's just to show that three different environments provide the same result. Okay? Okay, so this is the beta and delta. This is not very important. Um, consistency, minimum, maximum, etc. So let me show the results. So here what we do is to, for we have four measures, beta, delta, beta, delta, short, short, long, long. And what we do is to put controls and not controls. And what we do is to estimate the, this, this variable, beta, for instance, as a function of being hypothetical or breeze. Here, the reference group is real payment. Then you can see that nothing is significant. So you can see that paying people hypothetically you see here, has no any impact on any of these measures, okay? With controls, without controls, uh, whatever you want. So there is something that I may come in, in the breeze mechanism, but I'm not going to talk about this just for a question of time. So the main result is that there are no differences between real and hypothetical choices, okay? Then we go to the lab. This is, say, the important thing, no? because at the end of the day, to pay real money in the lab is something you can do. 
if you're running an experiment in Alicante and you want to pay people, you can pay people. I mean, maybe more costly, more money, less money. You have Bison, you have whatever you want. Even you have the problem with the ministerio because then you have to send one by one this the, the receipt the receipt for every individual, and you need to show the back transfer for any of them. But it's doable. Although I know that in Alicante now now they are using bricks. They pay one out of them. Okay, but the question is in the field. In the field, it's impossible to do this with real money because inflation. Because it's impossible to you know come back to pay people again, for trust, for many reasons. So this is really where it's important to have the result. Okay, so we do here the experiment again. We have 700 people, so we don't have any potential possible problem of power. And then the result, as you can see, is absolutely no. There is, doesn't matter whether you pay people, whether you don't pay people, when we talk, about time preferences, okay? You see here beta, delta, with controls, without controls, with control at enumerator level. I don't have here the, the table for the, where the errors are clusters, etc., because it's another possibility, but if you go to the paper, you have all the tests you can imagine with this, um, with this uh, test about uh, equivalence test, etc. and nothing is significant, okay? So, we would say the distribution is identical. Okay, and then we have this online experiment. In this online experiment, we couldn't have real money because was, for us was, you know, uh, almost impossible to do this with real money. So then we conduct only the breeze and the hypothetical. But what we wanted to do with the hypothetical was to test not whether it's different or not different than the bridge, which is a minimal thing for us, is whether asking long-term, for instance, versus uh, short-term to, to, to change the order have a different, has, has an impact. So we want to see whether, how sensitive is this time measure? Because there are two tasks, long-term, short-term, obviously there is an order issue, also, if you are running another experiment in the online experiment, there is an issue because it may be the case that you have the time preferences contaminated by the prisoner dilemma. And even more, if you pay real money in the prisoner dilemma, but you don't pay real money in the hypothetical task. So we wanted to do all this stuff. And then we have this experiment. So we have exactly the same task we said before, exactly the same with 30 euro, identical, but we have all these combinations. We have people are randomized to have games, games in these cases, uh, coordination games, before time preferences. That is one combination. Second thing is half of the people have long term before and then short term. So there is short term and then long term, or long term and then for short term. And finally, we have paid and unpaid games pay games paid with real money or not, okay? And this is what we got with the hypothetical one, which is the one we are interested in. So you can see that having games played before the time preferences task have an effect, okay? And this is an effect that is apparently quite consistent. It's also true when you make controls and when you do, say, when, when you put all the interactions, etc this effect decreases substantially, okay? So when you put all the interactions and you have control for all the possible things you can have, then this effect is reduced. But at least we show there is something that potentially may have an impact, okay? Well, so let me conclude. Um, what we show here is that the distribution of responses of individuals that are randomly allocated to treatment where they receive real money, hypothetical money, are not different. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to the second paper. Uh, if you want to download the paper, it's here. I can pass you the slides. The paper is here. And the working paper, I mean, we finished the paper exactly three days ago, this the second one. The first one we finished two weeks ago, so. 
And let me go to the second paper. Okay. One quick qualification, Pablo, again, uh, is um, I, I, I missed uh, in the sequence, uh, um, in the randomized sequence between uh, preference elicitation first versus games first, uh, um, what do subjects know at the beginning? Well, the instructions? Ev absolutely everything. Okay. So they, they know. Don't know the, the only thing they don't know is if you are in the hypothetical setup, you know you are in the hypothetical. Okay. Or you don't know that other people are in the paid one. Okay. We don't want to. We don't want to mess uh, in the sense that uh, then I'm realizing that I'm not getting money, but other people are getting money. If you are in the paid games and not in the hypothetical in the hypothetical time preferences, you know. Fine. This. Fine. Okay. And what about in terms of of this? So you know that you're going to be allocated randomly in one of the um, payment setups. No, you are randomly allocated, but you are not aware. That okay. Okay. Are. Fine. You okay. Need, okay. You as experimenter know the the experimental subjects don't. What about the sequence between the? What about the or the, the ordering? of games, the ordering, can, which can vary from game first, game last, uh, and, exp and, and, and and elicitations. You are asking whether they were not aware about the order? That's it. No, 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 no. At all, okay, so. No, no, they have only, so imagine you program this, this is two by two by two. Okay. And people receive instruction as they come, and then that's it. Okay, so okay. Play a game, there is real money involved in this. Fine, 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 fine. So so to do time preferences, this is hypothetical. Okay, 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 fair enough. Okay, thank you. Sorry for slowing it down. All yours. No problem. And then the second paper, it's a completely different, sorry, the motivation of the second paper is completely different. And and this arises because a conversation I had like five years ago, something like this, in, in Oxford with many people for the World Bank. Sorry, I didn't say before that the experiment in, the, in Nigeria were conducted with the World Bank. So they pay for all the massive stuff. I pay for the experiment, and you will understand now why I pay, um, but they pay for the, all the logistics. Um, I was talking with these people from the World Bank in Oxford, and the reason why there are many people from the World Bank in Oxford is because hand, I, think I would say 50% of the World Bank people do their PhD in Moscow because of the defeat, etc. And then I was having a lunch with Mexican World Bank people, and then we were talking about the experiment, blah, 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 and, they, and I said, but you don't pay. And they say, of course we don't pay. And I, I say, no, but if you don't pay, you cannot trust anything. And they said, to pay people is immoral. And I say, what? They say, yes, you are paying people because you never have been in the field and you have no idea what you're doing. But if you go to there, if you randomly select people in a village, imagine a village with 100 households, and then you randomly select 22, because it was a randomization, 22 of these people, are invited to participate in the experiment while the rest of the village are not invited. So you are creating inequity. This is problem number one. So these people are completely against of paying people because this creates inequity. But there is a second issue which is even more mm, concerning with risk preferences that you pay people according to their good or bad luck. And this is absolutely unacceptable. So imagine that you go to a village, 100 households, you invite randomly 22, and at the end of the day, because they play this whole lovely thing, they are, four of them are super lucky, they got a lot of money, and the other, and another four are very, very unlucky, and they got zero. So you create a conflict. And then when they say this, I say, oh my God, <laughs> I never thought about this before. Okay, so this is the story. So the story is about time preferences. Is, it's very difficult to pay real money with time preferences in the future.
because inflation, transaction, etc. Here is nothing about this because you pay a spot. So you play now risky and you are lucky you get the money now. The problem is a moral problem because you are creating inequity. You, the experimentalist. Okay? And there is no way to solve the problem except you deceive people. So if we let people to play real lotteries with real consequences, uh, with very, very small probability, we are not creating inequity. But in most of the cases, 95% of the cases, 99% of the cases, we are creating inequity. We. Okay? That is the point. So this is the point. This is the motivation of the paper. This is a joint paper with Diego, my student, Lorenzo Estepa from the ETA Foundation here. It's a place that they do a, a stuff in Latin America. Um, obviously, for me, it's beautiful to have these people because they run whatever I want for me. This is a, also jointly with Victor Orozco from the World Bank, from the Dime, from the, this division of interventions. This, he is the guy on the top of the money. Just to give you a name, Oriana Bandeira and Banerjee works for him. <laughs> so. And then Erika Rascón, who was my colleague in, in, in Middlesex, and she's a RCT person. She worked with Victor Orozco. And she is the one who was the PI for this huge project in Nigeria. In in um, OK, we know why risk matters. So we don't, I don't need to explain why, we, why risk is important. OK, so we have a task. I'm going to talk about whole lottery, but that's a matter. Uh, we have a task where we have to explain people uh, if you select right, then there is a safe payment. If you select left, there is a risky payment. Or in this case, there are risky and safe payment in both sides. People need to make decisions, which is complicated, etc. cetera. Um, but the critical issue is you create inequity among participants. Okay? You create a problem. You leave the village and you leave certain people with a bunch of money while many other people receive zero. Okay, because of this, these procedures are time consuming, are complicated. In the case of the whole lottery, they have to make 10 decisions or 11 decisions, depending on the format. This is time consuming. And also the problem of the inequity. Uh, so the motivation of this research was, what if we are able to generate a short version of the whole lottery with less decision? say five instead of 10, half time, half money, half cost, and free, okay? Free means with no consequences due to bad luck, okay? So this was we had in mind uh, one and a half year ago or two years ago, and then I said, okay, let's run an experiment in the lab first to test whether the short version and the long version are the same, then we test whether paying or not paying in the lab matters, and then we go to the field. That was the plan. So we did an experiment in Seville. At the same time, we did the other experiment. Um, we have this first experiment in Nigeria, and then given that what we was, it was like quite shocking, so we ran also in Honduras. The advantage was that in Nigeria we have everything in tablets, so we have everything in real time. Uh, so what we want to do is to validate a lab, a, a reduced version of the whole lottery in the lab first, and then to test this in the field with hypothetical and real benefits. So this is the lab design. In the lab design, we have one fifth of the individuals receive, I'm going starting with the of the right, receive the standard holauri. The other fifth receive the unpaid holauri and decisions, so real hypothetical. And then we have one fifth receiving the short one with real money, one fifth receiving the hypothetical one with uh, real money, with hypothetical money. And then we have also this breeze, okay? We never thought about running the breeze in the field because imagine that the breeze is creating even more inequity. 
So that is one why we don't have breeze for the short version. So this is what we want for the lab to be sure that everything is working and to compare the five, the short version with the long version for real, the, the short version with the long version for hypothetical decision. Okay, we have six, 300 people in the lab. Uh, let's start with the short version of the whole lauri. Um, here we have, the, we have the, the numbers for this. Sorry, this is for the lab, sorry, 300 people. This is for the field in Nigeria. And this is for the field in Honduras, it's identical. Okay, like, uh, in the lab we have uh, standard people, we did with paper and pencil, no enumerators. We have in Nigeria, we have um, uh, ordinary people, and in Honduras we have ordinary people too. It's also true that uh, Nigeria was poorer. Even Honduras is also very poor. The place we were in Honduras was not awful, was rural, but not super poor. And Nigeria was much poorer, but uh, at least I, feel, I felt much more secure in Nigeria than in Honduras. Honduras was, although it was not that poor that in Nigeria, you feel a lot of insecurity. In, in, in Nigeria, you felt nothing of insecurity. It was like super nice people and very easy. We did experiment in household. We have 45 enumerators in Nigeria. We have only 12 in Honduras, 360 observation each. This is the, uh, the whole audit test. This is the short version. We have the first decision. You have to decide whether you prefer this lottery or this A or B. You see here that the probability of getting 100 is only 10%. And here, the probability of getting 200 is only 10%. Okay, so this is a most likely result here. Okay, and then most of the people are going to play A. Then we change the probability for 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and 0 0.9. Okay. Um, why we select these ones? Because are the ones where most of the people switch from A to B. So the most standard result in Holori is that people play A for four times and then they switch. This is why we have this. This is the dream version. In the, in the long version, you have everything that you are now missing in this distribution. The 2%, the 20%, the 30 and then the 70 and 80%. Okay, we have three different measures because for all of us, uh, for people doing uh, risk taking, these are very important. The first is consistency, whether people make consistent choices or not. That basically means they select A, 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 then B, 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 B. If you do A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, then you are inconsistent. So once you are in B, you cannot move back. That is called inconsistency. Second thing we have is risk aversion, which is the name of safe choices from values to from zero to five, from zero to ten in the long version. And then we have something else, which is response time. So that measure the number of seconds the participant needs to make the choice. Why we have this? Because in the in the field, time is money. So we need to prove that they are time prefer sorry, risk preferences are the same in the terms of consistency, in terms of decisions or choices, but also in the term in, the, in, in terms of the, the money we need to run the spec. And the difference between this presentation and the previous one is here the, the baseline is going to be the hypothetical, it's not going to be the real. Okay, because the paper was were writing this way because of the code. I, honestly, I don't care about this, but the, the reference group is going to be the is going to be the hypothetical here. Result lab experiment. This is the number of uh, choices, safe choices, in the lab uh, for whole hour is short with hypothetical breeze and real. Okay. If something we need to say here is that probably breeze is different. 
Okay, you see breeze is in gray. Sorry if I mess and if I mess with colors, but I'm colorblind. This is and this is the breeze, it's a bit different, but okay, recall that we will focus on hypothetical real breeze. We estimate this and this effect comparing um, uh, to, to, to compute uh, consistency. And then we have consistency. There are no differences between real money, which is here, real, and hypothetical, which is the reference group in terms of consistency. Nothing absolutely to uh, remark here. If we, if we count the number of risk aversion decisions, so how, risk, how uh, averse to risk is the individual, we have no effect of real payments, zero effect, okay? Here, this is the effect for breeze. As you will see in, in the paper, our recommendation for breeze is take care with this. But in terms of real payment, we don't see anything in real payment. So hypothetical and real payment are the same. Now we compare the long version and the short version. And again, we don't get anything. We compare for the long version, the fact of being hypothetical and nothing is different. If we compare for the short version, nothing is different. So there is no effect for paying hypothetical or real in the short version or in the lab, in the long version, in the lab. And also there are no differences in inconsistency and in number of safe choices in the long and in the short version. So the switching point is the same, which is important for us because, as you know, it's a shorter version, which is good. This is Nigeria. You have here the real in, in blue. This is the hypothetical and then the breeze is in the middle. That means that in the field we didn't find anything um, with this breeze thing. And then we have the result. You see absolutely nothing. So paying people for real in terms of consistency has zero impact. So there are no more less people uh, in terms of consistency because you pay money or you don't pay money. And this is probably uh, answering to part of your question before, Marcelo. People are taking things seriously, at least equally seriously. Because if people are making random choice because there is no money here, then you should have something here. We don't have anything. We have the same number of risk averse the choices, so people are equally risk averse with money than with hypothetical payoffs. And finally, we have that in in this in the last uh, case, we have marginal effect on on time. Okay, um, I guess the number one is a typo; it should be four and not fourteen. Okay. Um, here we have this the effect uh, of apparently people with real money need a little bit more of time but this is a marginal thing okay we we were very happy with this so we then we ran the experiment in honduras indeed we were already in honduras running another experiment and this is why we did very fast okay um so we did exactly the same we did in nigeria exactly the same we did in honduras this is Honduras. Here we have again a hypothetical breeze and real, short version of the whole Lauri, only five decisions. And these are the results. So in terms of consistency, column one, two, and three, you don't see any effect for paying people or not paying people. In terms of risk averse choices, again, it's exactly the same. You don't see any difference. And in terms of paying people, again, you don't see any difference. So people that are paid are not need, do not need more time to respond. Okay, so then the general uh, summary of this paper is that we cover lab and to fill experiment with different subject pools. We have a short version of the whole Lauri that generates the same result that the long version in the lab. In the lab and in the field, hypothetical and real incentive measure produce the same risk preference profiles. And when we compare with breeze, we find results in the lab, but nothing in the field. Um, you can get the paper here. And in the paper, you have a lot of 
uh, statistics, particularly with this test for um, equivalent test, which is something I didn't want to explain here because it's, it's very, it's, it's long, it's very demanding. Um, basically, I'm done. I don't hear anything. Okay. Marcelo, are you around? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that we have uh, time for some additional questions. Uh, any okay. I don't know whether Marcelo is around. Yeah. I am, I am, sorry. Oh, Can you guys hear me? I... Yeah, sure. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a technology issue. Um, <laughs> I, I have a couple. I have a couple of uh, of quick questions. What is a um, what is the share of uh, of consistency? You showed the 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 treat the the param the, the estimates of the of the treatments, but not the constant. Just to have a rough idea. So it's seventy in in Honduras. It's seventy eight. Ah, it's it's it's, a, okay. it's at the bottom. Okay, 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 okay. That's fine. That's like reassuring. It's okay. It's uh, fine, fine. It's it's not very good, no. But you know that it's in, in the lab is thirteen, even in fourteen, fifteen. So okay. Yeah, but it's it's okay. It's it's reassuring that there's nothing weird. It's important is there are enumerators, okay? Yeah. In in and 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 let me explain something else. In Nigeria, these enumerators were super professional, mm -hmm. and then it's clearly having an impact. Because the number of inconsistent people is slower, much slower. Let me show you the number in, in Nigeria. You see, ninety-seven percent. This is the numerator thing, because these people are super trained, and you know you need to train them. But when once they catch the idea, they go to the household. It's like a, you know, it's like a machine. Pam, 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 pam. Yeah, so, yeah, Okay. Fine, fine, fine. And um, another quick one was: uh, Did you record uh, the the time subject took took to carry out the task? In where? In the ah no, okay. In the field, you cannot because it's it's, it's no, door no. to door. No, but the, you say if we record what the time taken to to carry out the task. Yeah, it's here. This is the response time. Fine, 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 fine. But, but this is because and we are using this survey CTO. I don't know if you, are, if you know what is this. Fine, 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 uh, fine. Have you ever used this survey CTO? Nope, nope, okay. nope, nope. New to me. Uh, this is a software the, the people in the World Bank use. Okay. A software to say for you called the Qualtrics. Okay? Oh, wow. Okay, this is Qualtrics for tablet. Right, right. Portable Qualtrics. Nice. That, you, that is not Qualtrics, but I say it's like Qualtrics for tablet that you yeah. can without internet. And then the, this machine records everything. Right, everything right, right. It records, so you can get whatever you want. Yeah, the dream of an experimentalist. Um, I don't know, because this is a sheet of system. Uh, if you remember, we have here 360 people. And we don't have 720 because was, we don't know why remove the reservation data from 360 people. Fine, fine. Because in Nigeria we have 720 people in the time paper. So, so fine. that disappear. That is the problem with this. Uh, fine, fine. A curiosity, that one last curiosity is, or oh, say, food for thought. Um, is there a relationship between consistency and response time? So you show us means, perhaps there is. I'm, I'm thinking here about what's inside uh, the protocol inside people's, uh, people's the, the decision protocol inside people's minds. What is a trade-off? I don't know. Is the question so, is, uh, I don't know if I'm showing my email or what I'm doing. I'm showing the, the screen or what I'm doing. You're showing us the Nigeria, the, the, the results from Nigeria. Okay, so the, the question is, um, 
And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure there is a relationship, okay? The problem is, for me at least, that we have no idea why people are inconsistent. And there are two possibilities, okay? So just, just imagine that instead of talking with me, you are talking with Adam, okay? There are two possibilities. <laughs> are making random choices, which is impossible, okay? Sure, sure. But there is another option, which is even more worrying, that is inattention. And in inattention, you say, A, 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 but not because you are inconsistent. It's because you are not, you know, putting enough effort. Yeah, you're playing, yeah, yeah, you're playing, uh, you're, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, you're playing. This is why. A compound lottery with inattention as one of the decision steps. And, and this is why, this is why we don't have the last decision, decision number 10, when it's for sure. Because right. if you put this for sure, then you catch that. And we really don't want to catch that because it's to put more noise, no? It's just leave it there, like this, a standard uncertainty things. Yeah, 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 makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's fine. I'll be curious to see if uh, the, tra the, the, the consistency, the consistency time trade-off plays, plays a role. Okay. Most likely it does not, although it's a, it's a, it's a raw, rough uh, correlation to, to discuss over coffee. It's no more than yeah, that. You know, the problem is that uh, being with enumerators, I'm not sure if this is very, you know, uh, this is not the best scenario. Yeah, least. just to say, I'd be interested in seeing the say the size of the the size of the estimate and uh, but okay, what I can do. No, no, no. I it's it's a specu it's a speculative answer. Next time I meet you, uh, I'd be interested in discussing that over coffee, but nothing to do with this with this thing. But still, in the in the discussion, uh, so you, you you treat these processes as separate: the response time and consistency. Perhaps they are related. Hopefully, no referee will raise it. Uh, uh, but um, we know they are, and at some point you have to you have to put a full a, a, a period and go ahead. So put it in there. Enough, enough. If I don't get this rejection, I did. <laughs> definitely, definitely. For me now, it's enough. So I'm not I'm not worrying about the referees. So I'm worrying about get this rejection. How about going beyond the desk? I'm not going by past the desk, off the desk. Yeah. That's that's fine. It's fine. Any any further questions? Sorry, I took. I, I, I have sold an, an awful lot of time, but it, it, this, these issues are uh, super fascinating, in my humble opinion. Just one uh, little question to Pablo. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's the bottom line of all this? Uh, it is uh, we shouldn't uh, be worried about paying to the client something like that. No? Okay, bottom line is we shouldn't be worried about paying people for decision making. Not not for uh, not for games, experimental games, because we have no idea about that. Mm -hmm. So okay, um, I didn't mention this, but for instance, in the CRT, and Marcelo knows about this test very much. There is massive evidence that paying people does not matter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. No matters at all. Doesn't matter if you pay for the correct answer, if you pay for participating in the test, or you don't pay anything. Matters zero. So there is this intrinsic motivation to do things, no? So probably when they face this task, because these tasks are super complicated or it's, the format is strange for them or whatever, you know, the people do it. So it's not that we are saying to get the truth about the preferences you need to pay. No, no. It's nothing about that because there is evidence that whole Laurie does not predict very much things. It's, it's more about, okay, if the question is whether paying or not for the whole Laurie, the answer is don't pay. Because you get the same. And it's the same. It's exactly the same. Did I answer? Yes. Yes, thank you. And there is, I think, something good from this, this good, good news is that if it doesn't matter to pay or not to pay, then we can put this in salaries. Which is useful, no? Especially time preferences. Time preferences is apparently correlated with everything, with whatever good personal trade you can imagine. 
patient people, you know, are more likely to do a sport, to save, to study, to whatever you want. Okay? Perhaps if we put this in the next uh, survey in Spain, in the next, in the next panel, we can see whether in the origin of many differences between regions is this, perhaps it is. So we have some data from 1,000 people in Spain and we have huge differences between Catalonia and Extremadura. When I say huge, I mean it's huge. So, but now we can say, believe this measure that before we couldn't because, you know, economy said, okay, but this is TikTok. More questions? One last, if uh, any doubts, which cannot, you cannot sleep with. <laughs> you cannot sleep. If not, you can contact Pablo at, uh, at any time. Mm, I take this as no more questions. We, we jointly uh, thank Join me in thanking Pablo for his uh, great presentation. We wish him best luck in, uh, in pursuing his research agenda and publishing these interesting papers. Uh, we hope we can, we can host you uh, physically as soon as uh, the, the uncertain times are, are over. And uh, should we clap? Just for... Yay! Yeah. Rain, rain. Good. I, I like this uh, collective... Uh,